Dragon's Dogma 2 is here, and emphasizing its unrivaled sense of adventure throughout a dynamic open world is that most video gamey of marketing buzzwords. Emergent Gameplay The game's developer propelled hype for this nebulous concept last autumn, during an interview with Edge magazine whereby they declared the game free of scripted events. Encounters aren't triggered, they said, but the result of the game's rules in systems interacting with each other. The event in question involves an encounter with a cave troll, which savagely and unexpectedly eradicated his AI companion pawns. Now hoofing it alone, the developer sought refuge in a nearby village, with the troll refusing to give up the chase. Let us finish this! They expected the villagers to scatter in panic, with the resulting ruckus affording them the opportunity to escape. What happened next shocked and amazed them. The villagers, instead of showing fear, forge a unified affront against the troll, swarming like honeybees to overwhelm their colossal invader. Now before we go on, let's be clear that emergent gameplay isn't novel to Dragon's Dogma 2. It's been around for years, with many games incorporating emergence into the very fabric of their being. The above example doesn't sound all that unique to be honest. AI friends attacking an AI foe is bread and butter for open world games in 2024. But the point that the developer is trying to make is that the villagers could conceivably have run away themselves, or maybe a handful would stay to fight and die at the hands of the troll. Perhaps the troll could have been intercepted by a swooping griffin before it reached the village, or possibly the villagers were already being ransacked by a troop of ogres before the developer and troll even arrived. And what if the developer decided to take on the troll single-handedly? Reddit is already awash with unique stories of gamers performing some kind of action and getting an unexpected outcome. Some have discovered the game's gargantuan foes succumb to head trauma, so maybe the developer could have found higher ground, a ledge or outcrop, perhaps to hurl them onto the troll akin to Shadow of the Colossus. And then, while atop the troll's head, some have ridden the bewildered behemoth as it stands over a precipice, falling into its death while they survive with minimal fall damage, finding themselves crash-landed in an entirely new area that would have taken hours to reach by other more conventional means. These ramblings epitomize emergent gameplay. They are the very result of game developers supplying a set of rules that grant players freedom to explore creative solutions to obstacles they encounter. An aversion to fast travel aside, Dragon's Dogma 2's developers haven't set out strict ways in which the game must be played. There's a framework, sure, but even guiding principles can yield unexpected results like those just mentioned. The trick is to make the game's tools, mechanics, and player abilities broad enough that divergence strategies can be explored. The developer is obviously trying to generate sales for Dragon's Dogma 2 in that Edge magazine interview, but emergent gameplay appearing so convincingly so that it appears to be a scripted event is pretty cool, whether you are blown away by the actual event itself or not. To be clear, emergent gameplay isn't about there being multiple ways to tackle a certain objective. Imagine a sentry guarding an entrance or an outpost. You might choose to take them down guns blazing or opt for a stealthy sneak attack. Maybe you kill them or spare them by creeping past undetected. Maybe you can distract them or find an alternative route inside the outpost altogether. These options present the illusion of choice, something open-ended gameplay does so well, and while this isn't a criticism of those types of games whatsoever, all those solutions are baked into the game's programming. For the gameplay to be truly emergent, it must combine open-ended structure with gameplay mechanics that generate specific outcomes unique to the combined components the player has deployed. The result is a more convincingly living, breathing open world, one that appears to exist beyond player actions, but reacts accordingly to their decisions. Take Traversal and Dragon's Dogma 2. 
secure fast travel, while available, is prohibitively expensive, requiring rare fairy stones to instantly get from one point on the map to another. The slower, more rudimentary form of autonomous travel is via ox cart, but these road trips invariably run into trouble. Attacks are common, with ox cart riders running the risk of being killed in an ambush, meaning you'll have to traipse back into town on foot. Should enough ox cart riders be killed, then the service will cease altogether. These riders can be revived, but much like fast travel, they require spending rare and expensive wake stones. The game then is steering you towards favoring expeditions on foot, where something unexpected seemingly lurks around every corner. Quest-giving NPCs could run up to you, or a band of mythical creatures might be stalking out of sight, hidden by long grass. It's here, hiking it through wild lands, that the epitome of emergent gameplay reveals itself some more. Players are free to experiment with any of the game's ten vocations, i.e. character classes, that can be swapped on the fly. You can opt to be melee-accomplished fighters, armor-breaking warriors, magic-equipped mages, a thief dealing damage via swift ninja-alike strikes, or an archer specializing in long-range weapons. Collected augmentations can be swapped between vocations too, giving more license to experiment. Combining this with all of the chaotic, unexpected happenstance befalling every expedition, and the fact a fully upgraded vocation feels crazily overpowered, means you're unlikely to play through Dragon's Dogma 2 without becoming adept at more than a handful of unique character classes. These vocation-aligned combat styles extend the game's AI-controlled pawn companions, too. Employ a warrior pawn, and they might just wade into the thick of the action for you, while mage and archer pawns will hang back, preferring to wield their powers from a distance. Some pawns will have prior knowledge of your mission, offering advice on how to best get around an obstacle, advice which you're free to ignore, by the way. Some pawns are fluent in native languages like Elvish, meaning you can converse with the elves, harboring the harbor area of the map if you so wish. Weapons, tools, skills, augmentations, pawns, vocations, these are the components of Dragon's Dogma 2 gives to you which you can combine in any which way you choose in its evolving open world to complete an objective. The open world's reluctance to hold your hand, to signpost, to refuse spelling out the solution to you, to not punish mistakes resulting from experimentation, but reward you with a world that reacts to your errors is how Dragon's Dogma 2 excels with its emergent gameplay. In this regard, it's akin to a blank canvas, and there are other variables at play too. The game's day and night cycle, with darkness proving itself far more dangerous, or inclement weather that'll affect enemy behavior. More common RPG tropes like dialogue choices and action versus stealth have little bearing here on the open world. Its vast opaqueness might seem impenetrable at first, but patience and experimentation are how you wrangle the best out of it. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.